Uh, hi, good morning to one and all. Uh, today's lecture topic is soft tissue management and impression techniques in FPD. Uh, okay. Uh, coming to the learning outcome, so it, uh, at the end of the lecture, you should be able to discuss the prerequisites of successful predictable impression making with elastomer. Explain three ways to ensure access to prepared tooth structure for impression making. Recognize the importance of gingival tissue displacement. Describe different impression techniques for FPD outline, the disinfection technique uh, for various materials. Okay, so first of all, coming to the objectives of soft tissue management. So it is to obtain a dry, clean operating feel. Okay, it's for easy access and visibility. To improve properties of dental materials to protect patient and operator, also to improve operating efficiency, okay? So there are two basic ways you isolate. The isolation control is done of fluids, okay? That is a mechanical method and a chemical method, okay? In mechanical method, there's rubber dam, suction tips, high volume vacuum, uh, saliva ejector, and slab doper. need for controlling the fluids okay so preparation of teeth large volumes of saliva and water has to be removed cementation and restoration impression making is better when there is less or no fluid okay ideally no fluid yeah rubber dam so it is used for isolation of one or more teeth from from the oral environment the application in prosto is basically for core build up and making in lay only which is also less used it's very difficult to do a tooth preparation for fpd under a rubber dam guys okay so it's like it cannot be used with uh, the polyvinyl siloxane impression as it inhibits the okay so high volume vacuum uh, yeah so these are suction tips which can be helpful for removing operatory debris uh, it's useful in the preparation phase effectively with an assistant and also an excellent lipid factor okay sorry that was a high volume vacuum yeah now is the saliva ejector uh, and uh, it's it's like um, an adjunct to high volume uh you know uh evacuation of the uh, uh saliva or fluids uh but it can be used alone for the maxillary arch please at the corner of that also it can be used for a mandibular arch guys uh also it has to be placed in the corner of the mouth opposite the quadrant being operated and the patient's head is turned towards it okay very effective used in the maxillary arch for impression and cementation it also can be a mandible arch corner rolls and cellulose wafers okay so we usually use corner rolls so you know easily and readily so they are of ob observance uh provide moisture control with saliva ejector isolation of maxillary teeth it can be done by cotton roll in facial vestibule isolation of mandibular teeth a medium sized cotton in the vestibule and one large one between the teeth and tongue so you can see where you want to put it cellulose vapors can also act as a retraction and uh, provide additional absorbency okay a slip doctor is uh, for isolation so you can see in the photo and evacuation of mandibular teeth the metal uh, ejector with attached tongue deflector is excellent okay so you can see that uh, it's most effective when used in the patient with the upright position this advantage is that it access to man lingual surface of the mandibular teeth is limited it can't be used with mandibular tori and it may soft tissues okay chemical methods of fluid control so we have seen mechanical now we are seeing the chemical methods and the silagogues are agents which control the salivary flow yes it has a side effect from dry mouth drugs which are used these are uh, uh, all the bromides okay so benthene and probenthene okay and also L can be given 
the local anesthesia. So retraction of the gingival tissue, this is done to obtain maximum exposure of the finished lining, okay? And uh, to make a complete impression of the preparation, including both the prepared and unprepared surface. Importance of a finished line. So basically to get the marginal integrity, okay? So the mar marginal fit is very important in preventing recurrent queries and gingival inflammation, okay? Methods of gingival retraction now come into chemical, me chemical, mechanical, and surgical. Coming to the chemical method, uh, mechanical methods, first is the copper band, okay? So it used to carry the impression as well as dis displace the gingiva to the expose the finish mid midline to expose the finish line. Technique of copper band is its welded tube corresponding to the size of the prepared teeth. One end, if the tube is trimmed to follow the outline of the gingival finish line, after positioning and contouring the prepared tooth, it is filled with modeling compound and impression is made. Okay, so it can be filled up and an impression can be Retraction cord. This is the retraction cord. So pressure packing of retraction cord into the gingival side is also used. We'll see more about it in the upcoming slides okay techniques to use a retraction cord so first of all we use a cord packer that is the instrument so these are three types universal small round and round so one to 1.5 mm and going to 3 mm so a cord can be packed with this special instrument like a fissure packing instrument okay Coming to gingival retraction procedure. So a two inch piece of retraction cord is cut off and twisted and made tight as possible and small as possible. And a loop of retraction cord is formed around the teeth and held tightly with the thumb and a forefinger pressure. And placement is started by pushing the cord into the sulcus on the mesial surface, okay? So from mesial, you could do the distal, okay? So it is slightly uh, pack into the uh, distal crevice to hold the cord in position while it's being placed in the uh, mesial portion. Okay, so the cord is placed subgingivally. The instrument must be pushed inside, as you can see, slightly towards the area already tucked into the place. Okay, so if the force of the instrument is directly away from the area previously packed the already cord will be pulled out. Understand? So you have to start slowly packing and you can see the impression there, okay, of the cord. You have to go from mesial to distal. Occasionally, it is necessary to hold the cord with one instrument while packing with the second. So sometimes you do that, but most of the time you don't need to do that. The instrument is slightly angulated towards the root to facilitate the sublingual placement of the cord. Okay? So ideally should not be parallel uh, or otherwise it'll rebound and push so that is what this diagram is showing okay excess cord is better to be cut out from the mesial interproximal area okay so here you can just cut it out the placement of the distal end is finished until it overlaps the mesial okay and it is made sure that the force of the instrument is directly towards the cord previously packed okay so and a little can be left out so after taking the impression it can be easily removed okay so you cannot place the cord so shallow it has to be a little deep okay so this is the correct placement this is the incorrect placement this is the incorrect placement you can just compare okay uh yeah so this is again just showing how do you do it so you take the cord you measure it around the teeth you twist the cord you cut the axis start packing with the mesial you take the cord packer from the mesial to the distal guys subgingivally push 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 pushing motion this is already uh placed in this is out so going from mesial to distal okay axis is cut and it is pushed and uh impression is uh, made and then taken out later Chemical, mechanical methods of gingival retraction. So a chemical is uh, with pressure packing in the retraction cord. So we, uh, uh, what do you call, dip it into a chemical. So that is a chemical, mechanical method, which results in enlargement of gingival sulcus as well as control of fluid seeping from the 
levels of us, okay? So chemical basically use are the local vasoconstrictors, okay? Which shrinks the gingival tissues a little bit, okay? So epinephrine, uh, aluminic chloride, alum, aluminum sulfate, ferric, okay? Ideal requirements of chemicals used for gingival reduction cord should produce effective gingival displacement and hemostasis, should not produce any irreversible damage to gingiva, should not have any systemic effects, okay? Surgical methods of uh, gingival retraction, okay? So surgical methods, there is a uh, gingivic touch, that is uh, rotary cure touch and electro okay? So rotary cure touch, uh, it's a drawing technique wherein a portion of epithelium within the sulcus is removed to expose the finish line, guys, okay? So it should be done in healthy gingival tissues. Um, the criteria should be, it should uh, there should be no bleeding on probing. The depth of the sulcus should be minimum. Technique of uh, the rotary cure attach should be, it is usually done simultaneously along with the finish line preparation. Portion of... Uh, circular epithelium is removed using a torpedo diamond burr and that improves the tactile sense uh you know from the high, uh, uh, sorry so it is to improve the tactile sense and also to have it running very slowly okay abundant water should be sprayed during the procedure so uh, there's no uh thermal heat produced in the teeth, okay? And we are not uh, harming the pulp if it is there, if it's a vital teeth, okay? So a cord, the traction cord is impregnated with uh, aluminum chloride and it can be used to control the bleeding, okay? Disadvantage is that um, it has poor tactile sense, so this technique is very sensitive and it is potentially damaged. This is the... Um, the surgical handpiece, which is here, that's same, yeah. Okay, indications would be areas of inflammation of gingival tissue where retraction cord cannot be used. Gingival porifluoration uh, around the prepared finish mark lines, okay. Contraindication is patients with pacemaker and use of topical anesthesia, such as ethyl chloride and other inflammatory aerosols, okay has to be avoided okay so gingival sulcus enlargement okay or removal of edentulous cuff okay or crown lending procedure so in these uh indications it can be used okay so that was the end of uh, the gingival retraction and uh, you know uh, the types and the techniques used okay so now we'll come to the impressions in the rpd so definition of an impression is a negative likeliness or copy in reverse of the surface of an object, an imprint of the teeth and adjacent structures for use in industry. Impression materials are non-elastic and elastic. In non-elastic, there are plastic impression compounds, zinc oxide, eugenol. In elastic, you have hydrocolloids, agar, alginate, non-aqueous elastomers. Here we are using our FPD impressions, right? Silicones, condensation, addition, vinyl silicon, polysulfates, polyether, okay? This we do not use polyether and silicones are there. We are usually using silicones, okay? Impression techniques. Impression techniques can be divided into monophase, monophase and dual phase. Monophase is usually a single step. Medium viscosity material is used. Dual phase is using one step or two step heavy putty, heavy body and light body okay and spaced and not spaced okay monophase impression technique is a rigid impression tray of a size 2 to 3 mm thickness of an impression material is taken a we brush a thin layer of vps tray adhesive on the tray and allow it to air dry for five minutes using a firm full stroke of the dispenser we fill the entire tray with the monophase impression material as seen okay Okay, so we are loading the tray. Okay, so tray filling will take two minutes. Okay, uh, for the syringe around the prepared teeth, dispense it in the intraoral. So you uh, dispense slight amount of material in the prepared teeth. Okay, remove the retraction cord if you have placed one. If not, no problem. And inject the monophase uh, material around the clean and. 
okay so you place it slowly slowly seed it in the mouth the tray must be seeded within one minute of the start of the oral syringing within two minutes of the start of tray filling okay so just place it on time oral setting time is four minutes that's important that you have to know remove the impression rinse dry and disinfect the stone model may be poured after 30 minutes okay apply a downward pressure along the peripheral tray to break the seal because these are very tight impression materials they take tight space and remove the impression from the mouth inspect the impression for evidence of defect or tears Thoroughly examine, explore any sulcus uh, dentition, anything remnants around the uh, teeth. Okay, so it's a very stable material. It can be poured up to two weeks, but of course you should do it as soon as possible. Okay, coming to the dual face putty wash technique, there is essentially three ways of recording a putty wash technique: one stage and two stage. So one stage is a putty and wash are recorded simultaneously, also called to tw twin mix or laminate technique. Two staged unspaced technique is a putty is recorded first, and after setting, relining, relined with uh, a thin layer of. Okay, so one stage. Uh, impression is uh, you can just uh, put a little bit light body put the heavy body here and just take an impression and there you can see the impression okay two stage unspaced is putty is recorded first after setting relined with a thin layer of wash material disadvantages is additional time of having to wait for two materials to set okay contamination of the putty with saliva yes that is there difficulty to reseed back in the mouth okay two space two state space technique which we are using usually in the department here as for this it creates a space for the wash okay so it'll be more accurate okay so polythene spacer over the teeth prior to making the putty index is placed recording the putty impression before tooth preparation and placing the putty and providing escape channel for the wash. Okay. So polythene spacer is made. Okay, it can be um, any polythene spacer. Okay, and uh, so example, this is just the mouth of the patient, and then you take a heavy body on top. Okay, right, and then the polythene spacer is removed, and then you load the light body, replace it back, and then you can see the accuracy. Okay, so they've just taken a model example okay so coming to our last two slides guys so disinfection of disinfection techniques of materials also important so type of din disinfection is high level intermediate and low level so glue to the heights are usually the things we are using in the department okay all right so um the impression materials which can be used here uh the types are irreversible hydrocolloids so alginate, zinc oxide, eugenol, polyether, polysulfate, okay, polysulfate, we are not using additional, uh, addition silicon, okay. So 10 minutes, just wash it with water, um, uh, dry it, uh, spray it with the disinfectant, dry it, and usually, ideally, should be placed in a sealed bag, okay. Uh, intermediate has sodium hypochlorite complex, idophores, phenols, fluorhexidine, alcohols, okay. So zinc oxide, eugenol, poly, their additional addition, silicon impression compound, okay? And this is not recommended. So guys, usually 10 minutes of okay? Type of disinfection and its mechanism. So ideally, glutal dehyde is non-oxidizing. 2% is used. So it has an alkalizing agent for proteins, mainly affects the amines, the amides, and the sulfaldehyde uh, groups, okay? So example is Cydex, okay? Uh, for sodium hypochlorite, example is Clorox, okay, idophores are also oxidizing, sorry, sodium hypochlorite also oxidizing 0.5%, 1 to 2%, okay, so it disturbs the layer of uh, cell membrane here, proteins are deactivated, okay, betadine is a common example, alcohol is non-oxidizing, 60 to 90%, cell membrane and lipid component is destroyed, okay, or precipitated, and isopropyl alcohol is used, Chlorhex is non-oxidizing, 2 to 4%, okay? Intracellular contents are coagulated and cell membrane damaged. Savlon is a very common example. 
phenol, phenol, ph um, sorry, uh, phenolic uh, compounds are used that is non-oxidizing, 1 to 3 percent. It damages the cell membrane. Lysol detol is a very common example, okay? So just know the mechanism and know uh, the names of the disinfectant used and what material it uses and uh, the procedure. Okay, guys? So thank you so much for patient listening. Uh, guys, uh, if any questions are there, we are in Polyclinic 3 in the Prosto floor, pro Prosto lab. Come and ask us questions. Please read and standard textbooks. Again, for FPD, I'm repeating, is Schillenberg and Rosensteel. Please refer to the standard textbooks and uh, the lecture topics. Uh, thank you for patient listening, guys.